The sun hung low in the sky, casting a warm golden glow over the quiet suburban neighborhood. Jerome Davis, a 17-year-old high school senior, was driving his father's car after a grueling basketball practice. As he cruised down the streets of his familiar town, he felt a wave of relief wash over him. He was looking forward to a warm shower and a home-cooked meal with his family. Jerome had always been a good kid. He respected others, worked hard, and had dreams that stretched far beyond his small town. Jerome's father, Thomas Davis, was a well-respected police captain, known for his unwavering commitment to justice and fairness. He had worked tirelessly to ensure the safety of their community, and his reputation was held in high regard. Jerome admired his father, but he also longed for the freedom of being just a teenager. Tonight, he would get to relax, no police sirens, no responsibilities, just time with family. As Jerome neared the intersection of Maple and Fifth, he glanced in the rearview mirror. A police car was following him. At first, he didn't think much of it. He wasn't speeding, his tags were up to date, and he always made sure to follow the rules of the road. But as the seconds ticked by, he began to feel uneasy. Something wasn't right. The familiar flash of lights broke the stillness of the evening, the sound of the siren cutting through the air. Jerome's heart skipped a beat, his stomach tightened with dread. He was no stranger to seeing police cars on the streets, but this felt different. This felt personal. He did his best to calm himself as he pulled over to the side of the road, his hands gripping the steering wheel as if it were his lifeline. Dad, I'm getting pulled over, Jerome said, his voice trembling slightly as he reached for his phone. Thomas, on the other end of the line, immediately picked up on the fear in his son's voice. Where are you, son? His voice was filled with concern. I'm just a few blocks from home, on Maple and Fifth, Jerome answered, trying to sound calm but failing. All right, stay calm, be respectful, and comply with whatever the officer asks. I'll be there as soon as I can, okay? Okay, love you, Dad. I love you too, son. Jerome ended the call, slipped the phone into his pocket and took a few deep breaths. He watched as the officer, a middle-aged man with a gruff demeanor, walked toward his car. The officer's uniform was neatly pressed, his belt filled with the standard tools of the trade. Behind him, a younger officer, probably fresh out of the academy, followed hesitantly. Officer Miller, Jerome thought. He recognized the name from the town's police roster. License, registration, and proof of insurance, Sergeant Harris barked. His tone was harsh, immediate, as if he was expecting trouble. Jerome nodded, his fingers moving quickly to retrieve the documents from the glove compartment. Yes, sir, he replied, his voice a little unsteady but still polite. He handed over the papers, trying to keep his hands from shaking. Is this your car? The officer asked, his eyes scanning the interior suspiciously. Yes, sir, Jerome responded. It belongs to my father. Any drugs or weapons in the vehicle? No, sir. Harris raised an eyebrow, narrowing his gaze. There was something about the way he looked at Jerome that made the young man feel exposed. He felt like he was under a microscope, even though he knew he hadn't done anything wrong. He was just driving home, but the officer's glare suggested otherwise. What are you doing in this neighborhood? Sergeant Harris asked, his tone filled with accusation. Jerome was taken aback. I live here, just a few blocks away. Harris seemed to dismiss his answer, his eyes lingering with suspicion. Really? The officer's tone was dismissive, almost mocking. This doesn't seem like your kind of neighborhood. Jerome's confusion deepened. What did he mean by that? The words stung, but Jerome kept his composure. He had learned from his father to never show weakness in the face of injustice. I live here, sir, Jerome repeated, his voice firmer this time. Officer Miller, sensing the tension, leaned in toward Sergeant Harris. Sergeant, can I have a word with you? Harris's eyes flashed with irritation. Get back in the car, Miller. I'm handling this. But Sergeant, we have no reason to stop him. He wasn't speeding and his tags are valid. We're just wasting time here. I know a criminal when I see one, Miller. Harris snapped, his voice dripping with disdain. Get back in the car. Jerome swallowed hard, trying to keep his composure. He had to understand why this was happening. He needed answers. Sir, can I ask why I'm being pulled over? Jerome asked, his voice steady, but the knot in his stomach tightening. I'm asking the questions here, Harris replied, his tone clipped and unfriendly. 
Just then, Jerome saw a car approaching from behind the police cruiser. His heart skipped a beat as he recognized the vehicle. It was his father's car. The officer's demeanor shifted when he saw the captain step out of the car, his police badge gleaming in the fading sunlight. Thomas Davis approached the scene with a calm yet commanding presence, exuding authority without saying a word. Good evening, officers, Thomas said, his voice low but steady as he nodded to both men. What seems to be the problem here? Sergeant Harris stiffened. His confidence faltered when he saw Thomas Davis standing before him. Good evening, Captain. Everything's under control. I'm just questioning the suspect. Thomas raised an eyebrow. Suspect? Why did you pull him over? Was he speeding? Did he run a stop sign? No, sir. Everything checks out, Harris admitted reluctantly. Then why are you questioning him? Harris muttered. He looks suspicious. Thomas's eyes narrowed, his jaw tightening. Suspicious? You're questioning my son based on suspicion alone? Yes, sir, Harris stammered, unable to meet Thomas's gaze. I didn't know he was your son. I wouldn't have stopped him if I'd known. Sergeant, Thomas said, his voice calm but his anger evident. You stopped him without cause and questioned him based on nothing but your biases. That's unacceptable. I'm sorry, Captain, Harris mumbled, his face turning pale. Thomas took a deep breath, the anger and frustration threatening to overwhelm him. You've made a mistake, Sergeant. This cannot happen again. This needs to change. Yes, sir, Harris said quietly, barely above a whisper. Turning to his son, Thomas's expression softened. Jerome, you're free to go. I'll see you at home. Thanks, Dad, Jerome said, a mix of relief and exhaustion flooding through him as he started the car. He pulled away from the scene, the police cruiser fading in the rearview mirror. Thomas stood there for a moment, watching his son drive away. He couldn't shake the knot in his stomach. This was more than just an incident on a quiet street. This was a stark reminder of the racial injustices that still plagued their society. As Jerome made his way home, Thomas turned back to Harris and Miller. There are going to be changes around here, Sergeant, Thomas said, and I expect you to evolve with them. Harris nodded, his expression a mix of guilt and shame. Good, Thomas said. He turned to Officer Miller. Officer Miller, I expect you to lead by example. Learn from this. As Thomas drove home, he couldn't help but feel a deep sense of anger. But there was also pride for Jerome. His son had handled the situation with a level of maturity and composure that most adults couldn't have managed. At home, Jerome was waiting for him. Are you okay, son? Thomas asked as he pulled his son into a tight hug. Yeah, I'm fine, Dad. It was just scary, Jerome said, his voice barely above a whisper. I know, son, Thomas replied, his heart heavy. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but you handled it so well. I'm proud of you. Later, as they sat down for dinner, Thomas reflected on everything that had happened. He knew this wasn't just a one-time incident. It was a sign that the work was far from over, but he also knew that change was possible. It had to start with conversations. Conversations like the one he was about to have with Jerome. Jerome, what happened today wasn't right, Thomas said, his voice serious, but you stayed calm you stayed respectful, and you did the right thing. That's what matters. I understand, Dad, Jerome said quietly. I just wish things were different. They will be, son, Thomas replied. It's up to us to make sure they are. The next day, Thomas called a meeting with the entire precinct. He shared the events of the night before and stressed the importance of treating everyone with respect, regardless of their background or appearance. Prejudices have no place in our force, Thomas said firmly. We must hold ourselves to the highest standard. The people we protect deserve nothing less. As he left the meeting, Thomas couldn't help but feel a sense of hope. Change was difficult, but it was possible, and it had to start with small moments like the one he had witnessed with his son.